If you've ever attended a trade show, you might have seen a booth giveaway item that consisted of a see-through bouncing ball with a flashing LED light or two inside, and sometimes a noisemaker. Today we examine what's inside one of these balls, so you need to destroy yours to get a look at its internals. If you were to slice open one of these balls, you'd find the electronics sit in a clear plastic egg shell-like enclosure that pops apart when the rubbery outer ball is cut away. There isn't much to the electronics. There's a single IC controlling the LEDs. It's hidden under a little black bulge that is actually a protective epoxy coating. The chip mounts to the circuit board by a technique called chip on board. If you could look beneath the epoxy, you'd see a chip die directly mounted on the PCB with the board wires connected to copper traces. That's really about all we can say about the chip. If we pry off the epoxy, we destroy the chip in the process. And looking at the die itself won't tell us much about how it works unless we bring in a scanning electron microscope. And that's a multi-million dollar instrument and we don't quite have the budget for that. What's also noteworthy is what's not on the circuit board. There are no passive components, no resistors, no capacitors, no inductors. Everything happens on the IC. That's what you might expect in a piece of electronics that's cheap enough to be a giveaway item. But the chip running the show isn't the most interesting part of the ball. The more intriguing aspect of it is how the LEDs get actuated when you bounce the ball. That happens courtesy of a super simple mechanical switch consisting of a spring and a metal pin. The pin sits in the center of the spring and is oriented along the spring's vertical axis so that when the spring bends over far enough, the spring and the pin touch. The spring bends or deflects outside its axis when the ball bounces with sufficient force to move it. When the pin touches the spring, the momentary contact causes the IC to flash the LEDs for a period of time. From looking at the orientation of the spring and the pin, it also becomes clear why these balls sometimes bounce without actuating their LEDs. If the ball bounces so the pin is perpendicular to the bounce direction, the spring just moves up and down in its axis and doesn't reflect to touch the pin. Some of these balls contain a little noisemaker as well as the LEDs. The only difference in the electronics between the two versions is an additional capacitor as well as the noisemaker. The only other component in the ball is a battery holder, which holds two silver oxide 1.5 volt button cells. Both the balls and those that contain the noisemaker use the same two button cells, so the noisemaker versions run out of juice a bit quicker because they have to power both the LEDs and the noisemaker. When the ball runs out of juice, you will be left with the bouncing ball of the non-lighting, non-noisemaking variety. With that, we've kept our eye on this particular ball long enough. For more teardown videos, go to eeworldonline.com.